Between new barriers to learning and a persistent racial divide, the past year has been especially difficult for students in the Boston public schools. There's growing urgency about the right to student leadership intensified by concerns over adult supervision that some students call manipulative. That was the main reason why some leaders resigned from the Boston Student Advisory Council recently, and some of the students who remained in the council say there's still a need for change. Two of them are with us tonight, Dorian Levy, Levy rather, and Josie Hannah Colon. Thank you both very much for being with us. I'd like to start with uh, Dorian Levy. Um, you're one of the members, you're still on the council, but things need to change. Why is that? Um, I personally believe that things need to change under the leadership. I mean, the council focused on student voice and it should take more of a student leadership to carry the council in a way um, that us as students should be more of a control of the council. Yeah. And uh, Josie Hanna, what about you? What do you think needs to change? I feel as though in many instances, students are seen to be forms of decorations and ornaments when we're placed into a meeting. So I feel like in terms of sticking to the idea of amplifying student voice and ensuring that student voice is actually heard, that it should be meant and it shouldn't be used as a way to just orchestrate this idea that student voice is involved. So I guess more like no more actual um, watering down statements and actually allowing students to speak their truth. And yeah, pretty much. Well, I, I, I've read some of your writings. You're quite capable of you know, organizing thoughts and expressing things. So uh, wh where is this experience you've had about things being watered down? So in some cases, there has been areas where um, students would want to say their opinion piece and they'd probably get a text message where it's like, hey, calm down. You don't want to say all of that or to just relax. So in some cases, like it's more like the way you express things that has to be a little bit watered down. And then it's almost as if like the students are really able to express their anger with whoever we're meeting with that day. And I feel like that's one of the issues because um, a lot of times students and young people are seeing that they have to be compliant and they have to respect the people in the room. And instead of actually fitting into us as young people feeling comfortable, it's more like we have to make the adults in the space comfortable for even meeting us and make it almost as if it's a privilege that we're meeting the adults rather than it's a privilege for them to be in the same space as young people. Dorian, what, what about your experience, especially uh, dealing with the adult supervision part? Um, I personally don't um, really connect with the um, adult leadership in BSAC. I mostly connect with our, our junior staff as they was in our place at one time and point. And I mostly connect with them. But in my like looking experience, looking at um, BSAC and their leadership, I feel like it does need a lot of change and it does need to be controlled a lot because these adults are taking too much um, control over the youth and your voice. When you say control, I, I know that was a very serious issue uh, raised by the students who resigned from the council and of course by Kimani James, who's also, uh, who also was on the Boston School Committee as a student representative. Uh, th they said that control, uh, at least part of it, was manipulative. Do you think he had a point there? Um, personally, I did not have any experience with that. Um, again, I just joined last year, October, um, November. So I really didn't have a full experience of that. But looking at other students um, experience, I could say that it was like, like it was being controlled. Josie Hanna, what about uh, your, your take on that? Um, personally, in form of manipulation, I do see that it was probably within certain conversations. Um, I've been a part of the Boston Student Advisory Council since, since October of 2019. So I've been able to experience BSAC both in person and virtually. Um, I will say emotional manipulation did occur in terms of trying to get students into certain meetings or in terms of having to attend, like, for example, reevaluation counseling, or in some cases, maybe even limiting the control of the agenda for the meeting. And that's also very problematic because it kind of, again, brings a stance that the student is being heard, but again, not having control for the agenda and what we're actually going to talk about kind of limits us as student representatives. Uh, what about the uh, the partner group with the Student Advisory Council Youth on board? Um, should that stop or should it be changed in some way? 
Um, Dory, you can go if you want. Um, I personally feel like um, I would like to continue the um the partnership with um Youth and Board, but take out the um the leadership by um Jenny Sam um Jenny Susama. Yeah. Yes. yes. I feel like that should be separated, and all her connection from YOB to be discontinued as someone in junior staff should lead that on for it to be a more um, collaborative role, not someone over taking more power than someone else. Yeah. Josie Hunter, what would you say about your, your experience of leadership so far? Because, uh, you know, I, I think there, there's a, an adult centered world where there might be this view that people below a certain age are, are, are not really in charge and, uh, you know, the, they can, you know, advocate, but maybe not do much more. I mean, how do you feel about that kind of perspective? So that's where adultism comes in. Um, I come from a Dominican traditional household, and I see in many instances where that's kind of um, implied. I've always been the type to always challenge that thinking. Um, I feel as though, wait, can you repeat your question? Sorry for it. Sure, sure. In other words, it, 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 there is this very pervasive view, maybe uh, adults saying that they're more responsible, uh, they have more right to, to give orders and set guidelines. And, you know, students can come in the room and, and, and they can advocate, but they can't do much else than that. Yeah, so in terms of that, I feel as though that's just an excuse to not bring in a student voice. So this is where I honor um, Kamani, for example. He did a lot of the work that a lot of the other school committee members did do. He managed a lot of meetings and yet his voice was not considered in terms of an actual vote because of his age. And I feel like in terms of that, that's where it's really problematic because why is it that students doing the same amount of work the adults are doing in addition to having school work, in addition to all these other responsibilities just because of their age and because they didn't mean, meet the 18 plus area that their voice shouldn't be considered when it comes to voting. And I feel like that's where everything's really problematic and what it comes down to, like limiting, um, limiting student voice and just excusing it as their maturity level, when in some cases, most adults aren't doing the same amount of work that students are doing at the same time. Right. Dorian, uh, you are in a school that has a focus on, on leadership. Uh, um, so what have you learned over the past few months about that? um my again um it was a virtual sentence and we didn't really understand how it was shown there is more of because i'm also on my um student government in the school they make sure that the students are being heard and that students are being considered in these spaces we do have advocates in the school that supports the youth voice as in um because my school is a pilot school there isn't also on a governing board so stu students serve on that governing board and make sure their voice are being heard. And like, again, a lot of us student government plans the event for schools or put our voice into like stuff as in like budgeting and all type of stuff. Right. And finally, uh, uh, Josie Hanna, uh, I mean, one, one decision you, you've already made is that you wanna see things change, but you're also staying on, so why? So initially, when everything kind of hit the fan, as some would say, I did think of resigning. I was in the mindset, well, I was in utter, utter shock. My processing was very slow, and I didn't really have much time to process. But initially, I was like, I'm going to resign. I do not condone any of the behavior that has been displayed the past couple of days and what has been displayed to me. But as I spoke to one of my mentors and the people around me, and I, again, started connecting to people like um, Dorian and the others who decided to stay, I really saw potential. Um, I know working a part of BSAC um, since last year, um, 2019, I knew that we still had a lot of things to be done. I know we have a lot of projects that are still in the works. And it's not like the Boston Student Advisory Council has just been sitting around and doing nothing because we've done stuff um, from going to um, different climate strikes to making M7 accessible. And that's way beyond from when I ever joined Boston Student Advisory Council. So it's more, it was more of the idea of if I'm not there, if my other colleagues aren't there, then who's really going to do the work aside the district to actually make le certain legislations actually pass? Well, I'd like to thank you both very much for taking the time to join us and uh, show your leadership, Josie Hanna Cologne and uh, Dorian Levy. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank you.